Okay, uh, so yeah, hi everyone. It's great to see so many people actually. Uh, nearly 60 people here. Uh, so yeah, my name is Scott Herrer and I work for Friends of the Earth Scotland as a Just Transition Organiser here in Aberdeen and, and the North East. Uh, so I'm going to talk a wee, wee bit about the COP and what it means for Friends of the Earth, but also focus on what uh, climate justice and uh, just transition means to me, especially here in the North East. So I'm going to sort of try to combine both. Uh, but before I get into that, I think it's, I always think it's important to remind ourselves the extent of the climate crisis. And I just also want to say that a bit of this talk is going to, is coming from, I we did a speech a couple of weeks ago at the climate rally. So some people might think it sounds familiar, but there's, there's some changes as well. So like I say, I think it's always important to remind ourselves uh, of the climate crisis as something uh, like the extent of the cr climate crisis. We often think it's uh, happening elsewhere, but occasionally it, it crops up in our communities. So whether that's more frequent and intense storms that saw flooding in Balata not long ago, or the risk of water shortages here in Aberdeen, uh, or, or as I witnessed this summer, uh, and also I just want to say, there's, the next picture is going to be a picture of a, a dead animal. So if you don't want to what, see it, then, then look when uh, and it'll be on the next slide. So as I witnessed this summer, uh, watching juvenile guillemots starve to death on the beach of Aberdeen, because there's not enough fish for them, for them to eat, due to the unseasonably warm waters. But it's been happening elsewhere in the global south for much longer, and many people it affects don't have the capacity to adapt or get out of harm's way. For instance, in 2014, I had the privilege to teach school kids in Nepal. While I was there, I got told about something called a GLOF, which stands for Glacial Lake Outburst Flood. Uh, these are, these are caused by melting centuries old ice in the Himalaya due to climate change. And I learned the deluge in this photograph wiped out an entire villages in an instant. You can see the before and the after effects. So on the left is the, 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 the image of the, the deluge coming. And then on the right shows basically the village which was there is not existent. So these people were amongst the poorest people in a country which is economically one of the poorest on earth. This is how the climate crisis works. It's the poorest of the poor who suffer first. So this is why I will be among thousands of others on the streets of Glasgow on Friday, actually, on the school strike, but also on, on the Saturday, demanding climate justice at the COP. And you can be there too by signing up to our free coach uh, and I can share the link at the end. So what is COP? Uh, it is about countries coming together to submit and they agree their plans to maintain the Earth's temperature to 1.5. So that's what COP26 is about. But these plans don't go far enough. This is mainly because richer nations like the UK and US and the EU, which are in thrall to this business, dominate the talks and have historically voted against including more ambitious plans to reduce carbon emissions or send finance to countries that are facing the worst impacts on climate change. And the commitments they do make, they fail to act on these. So climate justice activists often describe the talks as negotiating who lives and who dies. Also, the Glasgow COP, and as Anna just pointed out, is the most exclusionary COP ever because many of those at the front line of the climate crisis have been excluded due to vaccine inequality, travel and accommodation costs, and the UK's chaotic and last minute support to overcome those barriers. This is why at Friends of the Earth Scotland, alongside the COP coalition, we'll, we will be focusing our activities to centre the voices of the global south. It also means countries like the UK doing our fair share in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. 
And this means richer countries like Scotland and the rest of the UK, who have historically benefited from burning fossil fuels that have caused the crisis, have a responsibility to decarbonise our entire economies first and rapidly. If we are to do this fairly, then it means we have to have a fossil free Scotland by 2030. However, instead, we are at the casino net zero, basically gambling on our whole future on non-existent technologies like carbon catch and storage and growing enough trees to suck out all the carbon uh, in the air so we can continue emitting, even though scientists say there isn't enough land capable for everyone to do that. That's, that's land capable, that's around the air, it's not just in Scotland. So, and if we do rely on that, it will inevitably lead, lead to more land grabs for that, for planting trees and more injustice in the global south. So I know, I know what I think we need to do. We need to like act now. And we also need to provide finance to countries like to Nepal to adopt to the ongoing crisis, which is affecting them and their people right now. Because those women, men, and children right, wiped out by that flood, what you just seen, another flood which are going to come, would have emitted less carbon in their lifetimes as a wealthy person in Scotland does in one day. And this is why we have to talk about rapidly phasing out oil and gas here in the north, here in the northeast, because of its direct role it has played in devastating lives around the world. And I don't say this lightly because I, along with my father, my brothers, and most likely many of you have probably worked in or worked in or indirectly worked in the oil and gas industry. So we know it can pay well, but I've, as I've witnessed, the industry doesn't care about people, nor does it care about the planet. It only cares about one thing, profit. It is profit for its shareholders before anything else. So in Aberdeen, we often hear of bosses from big oil and the cheerleaders in the local press and the council talk about how the industry is adapting, how it's going to be central in the energy transition. They don't talk about a just transition, but simply about energy transition. Yet how can we trust an industry to oversee any transition, let alone a just transition, when the number one goal is profit? These so-called energy companies at best spend 5% of their capital investments on renewable energy. The rest is spent on continuing extraction and exploration. When the simple truth is, most of the oil and gas has to stay in the ground. But the fact is that they still receive finance from banks, as well as benefits as well as benefit from public subsidies. So this is sort of money. I, I was speaking to Javier, I don't know if he's here tonight, but I was speaking to him yes, yesterday and he was talking about his project. So this is money which could go and invest in that sort of project and many others. But we also found out a couple of days ago, companies like BP and Shell paid no corporation tax between 2018 and 20. To me, that's, that's actually quite scandalous given the emergence we're, in, emergency we're in. So how do we respond? How do we respond to all this? So I'm sure many of you by now have heard the phrase a just transition. Some of you might have already had a, have a vision of what a just transition looks like. When I hear about, when I hear people talk about, it's often about oil and gas jobs being replaced by green jobs. But unless, unless we take away the profit motive that's embedded in the heart of our economic system, it means those jobs will never fully be replaced because at the moment it's cheaper to build wind turbines, solar panels, they're exploiting the labor and resources in the global south. So even though we know the vast majority of workers in the oil and gas industry have had enough, we've had, we've had a survey which shows that, and would prefer to work in green industries, you can hardly blame people feeling defensive or skeptical when they hear terms like just transition. Because many of our towns and cities throughout Scotland and the rest of the UK still carry the scars of industrial and just transitions. So we cannot have a repeat of what happened in the 1980s 
to the coal communities as depicted in these photographs, which is at the Battle of Augury, which is when whole communities were destroyed due to political reasons and profit. However, we, need to, we do need to reduce our oil and gas use is actually a lot much sharper than what we did in how we've declined in coal if we're to honor the commitments to the global south. So the task is huge, but I also think about bringing about a just transition will improve many lives. For me, a just transition goes far beyond the idea of replacing oil jobs and green jobs. It could include work or publicly owned energy companies, could like, and it could have universal basic income and more free time free public transport that's owned by the people and an NHS and social care system that meets the needs of people and the workers are valued. It means city streets from air pollution have well cared for green spaces on every corner. A just transition means everyone gets the opportunity to live in a warm and affordable home. So it's an opportunity to basically rid our society from injustice. And ironically, yeah, so at the moment in, 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 the city, in Aberdeen City, we have a beautiful green space in Torrey, but in their wisdom, the Aberdeen City Council are looking to destroy that green space. So it, it's, it's at the moment, it, it's, we have, we've got a lot of work to do. So how do we bring about that? How do we bring the just transition about? So we already have the ideas, for example, there's, Ideas like the Green New Deal, but who will bring that world about? I think there is really only one way of bringing about that world, and it is by the one thing that has ever brought social, political, and economic justice. It is about, it's by, it's by people like you, by getting together in workplaces, places of worship, in communities, and organizing and working out how to go about making that world happen. It will require a pl mass political movement. So I believe a transition can only be just if it's led by people, the workers and the communities it will affect, because we are the ones who are best placed to understand how to meet a basic needs of food, shelter, social, cultural and spiritual connection. Not the oil companies, not the council, not the government. They may help, particularly council and government, but we need to push them. And so we only do that by building a mass political movement. And the other thing I just want to say, I, I really welcome the work that the climate action groups are doing here in the Northeast. But I would also con call on you to consider how, the, how, how and what you are doing is supporting climate justice more generally and how it's disrupting the system we're in, particularly like supporting people in the global south, because we are in a, we're in the global community. So what we do here, effects elsewhere because I think no matter how hard I'm going to talk about the system because no matter how hard you try, try in our communities the system of government governance is stacked against the efforts of, the, of people so if you wanted to basically if you wanted to like create your own community energy company the energy system phases, favors large corporations rather than community or publicly owned energy generation companies. These, are com these should be run for people and not for profit. So the only way we can change that is through political organizing. So my, my role as a Just Transition organizer in the Northeast is about building a people-led Just Transition movement. So the challenge is immense, uh, but we have to start somewhere. Because if we allow those with vested interests to lead a transition, it will perpetuate the existing injustices and inequality here and around the world. Nothing will really change for most people. It's just instead of, instead of gas turbines, we just have wind turbines, but injustices will remain. So it's up to you and me to get organizing and make sure we help create that just world for, pe for people both here, in the global, both here and in the global south. So as Greta Thunberg says, we really do need to uproot the system and replace it with one that is based on care for each other and for all living things and the planet. So again, I call on you to 
come to Glasgow on Saturday and demand climate justice and also uh, basically get in touch with me as well. I really want to get in touch with people who are interested in this. Uh, and so we can start building a movement here in the Northeast together. So thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Scott. Can you pop your email into the um, into the chat so people can contact you if they want? It's on the screen as well, so I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a lot easier though if if it's in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Cool. Brilliant.